there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna be talking about the New Hampshire chicken breed and everything you need to know, and if it's the right breed for your flock. Before I get into that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you will receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So although they look very similar to Rhode Island Reds, the New Hampshire chicken never attained the Rhode Island Reds runaway success. It was overshadowed by the success of the Rhode Island Red, even though chicken breeders created the two just several years apart. The fact that they look very similar may have had something to do with it. This is a shame since this bird has much to offer the modern homesteader as a true dual purpose hen. Today, we will discuss this often overlooked bird and see if it will fit into your flock. So to start off, let's talk about the chicken background. The origins of the New Hampshire hen are much less than 100 years old. It was developed in New Hampshire and Massachusetts as a separate strain of Rhode Island red chickens around 1910 or so. Poultry breeders of New Hampshire were selecting hens for faster feathering, faster growth and maturity from the Rhode Island red strains that were around at the time. The honor of creating this breed went to Professor Red Richardson, who was working in one of the agricultural experimentation stations at the time. They were also selecting for good egg laying ability, but especially good meat production. To promote the breed, they initially used it in the Chicken of Tomorrow contest, popular in the US in the late 1940s. A short documentary called The Chicken of Tomorrow was produced in 1948 to educate the public about the improvements to the chicken industry. To realize the new importance of this, chickens had been a steady source of meat protein through the war years, and now people wanted more. So the broiler industry went into top gear to produce enough birds to feed America. While the New Hampshire breed didn't win the contest, it did become one of the first breeds to establish the broiler industry. They also used them to create the Delaware chicken breed, another short-lived star of the broiler industry. In 2018, they presented a petition organized by the Canaan Elementary Schools to the governor of New Hampshire to make the New Hampshire the state's official bird. The governor signed it into law the same year. Now let's talk about the appearance of the New Hampshire. New Hampshire is roughly the same size as the Rhode Island Red, but the body has a more triangular form to it. It's a deep, broad body and is an all-around large, meaty bird. Plump would be the best choice of word. The feather coloration is quite different from the Rhode Island Red. Feathers are usually a lighter shade of red, while the Rhode Island's coloration could be said to be mahogany. The New Hampshire is near to the, a chestnut shade with occasional pale yellow highlights. In sunlight, the feathers do bleach out to a lighter shade of red. The hen's neck feathers are black tipped as are the tail feathers as well. Under feathers are a light salmon color. The red comb is single, which can be quite floppy with the hen. Ear lobes and wattles are also red. Eyes are orange while the beak is a reddish horn color. Shanks are clean and there is a reddish line that runs down the shanks to the toes of which there are four. Shanks and toes are yellow in color as is the skin. There is a bantam version of the standard bird, while the standard birds weigh about eight pounds for the rooster and 6.5 for the hen, and the bantams will weigh 34 ounces for the boys and 30 ounces for the girls. It's often used as one half of the sex link industry. If you have watched some of our previous videos or have read any of our articles on our site, you will remember that sex link chickens are made with sure parents. The New Hampshire rooster over a barred rock hen will give you a black sex link chicken. Or a New Hampshire rooster over a white Plymouth rock or Rhode Island white will give you a red sex link chick. In the initial phases of experimentation with the New Hampshire, a few sports with white feathers and occasional black feathers were created. These sports were gathered together, bred, and eventually became the Delaware breed. Finally, there are two varieties of the New Hampshire, blue-tailed, and that was created in Holland and remains very rare. The New Hampshire white is also now quite rare and it's hard to find a good breeder of this lovely bird. Now let's talk about the standard. It took several years for the New Hampshire breed to be significantly different from the Rhode Island red. Work on that breed started around 1910 and then the breakthrough came in 1918. The New Hampshire was finally admitted to the American Poultry Association in 1935 as a separate breed. The APA classifies the bird as American. The American Bantam Association classifies it as single cone, clean legged. The Poultry Club of Great Britain designates it as a soft feathered heavy breed. Now let's talk about the egg laying and temperament. The New Hampshire is a good layer around 200 large tinted light brown eggs per year. This equates to about three to four eggs per week. They can also go broody fairly frequently and are good setters. If allowed to hatch their own, they make great mothers as well. Some broodies have been known to accept other chicks under them too, but naturally this will vary from hen to hen. The New Hampshire is a family-friendly bird making great pets, 
as they are easy to tame. As a medium sized bird, they can be quite food aggressive and are willing to push and shove flock mates out of the way. Certainly not a good thing if you have shy, docile breeds already. However, you can reduce this bullying behavior by having several feeding stations spread apart from each other. Obviously, their personalities will vary greatly, so be aware they can be docile and lovable to unfriendly and aggressive. Now let's talk about some of the health issues. They are robust, sturdy hens with no major problems noted in the health department. The usual health checks for parasites and other nasties should be all that this is needed for the breed. If you're planning to keep New Hampshire's in a cold environment, the usual winter preparations apply. You can expect them to live for around seven years. So are the New Hampshire's the right chickens for you? If you're looking for a dual purpose hen that leans towards meat production, it could be your breed. Quick to feather out and mature a decent layer of three eggs per week and dresses out to a table weight of around eight pounds for the boys and six pounds for the ladies. A great all around bird for the family. They are said to be people friendly, intelligent birds that are reliable, cold hardy and robust. And they also tolerate heat well, but need shady spots to hide in. As they can be quite pushy with food, it would be best not to put them with more docile, easygoing breeds. The New Hampshire seems to have lived its life in shadow of its more famous parent bird, the Rhode Island Red. This is sad because this bird has a lot to offer. These birds aren't too noisy and happy to forage around your yard looking for tasty treats. They are thrifty birds that are well worth considering if you wish to raise birds that are truly dual purpose. If you have New Hampshire's, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.